Hey there, thanks for tuning in to Duckbricks. I'm Chris, and today we're going to be taking a look at two of the brand new June 1st, 2023 LEGO Marvel Super Heroes buildable characters. Now, if you're a fan of Duckbricks, you know that we love construction, aka construction plus action, like LEGO action figures. From Bionicle to Hero Factor and even the older superhero figures, LEGO has been experimenting with construction for a long time. And you can see over on the wall right there, we've got a ton of the old Bionicle stuff, as well as a lot of the superheroes things. But in recent years, the last construction that we got as a main line was pretty much the Star Wars CCBS figures, and those ended quite a while ago. But now, LEGO seems to be going, for better or for worse, full force into doing a new style of construction. These fully system-built, brick-built, buildable action figures seem to be basically the future of what buildable action figures are for LEGO, and I certainly am very curious to see exactly what is going to come of these. Now, the first one that we actually got was last year, the Iron Man figure up there, which was quite an expensive set, it was kind of a display model, and then we got a lot of cheaper ones, like the Spider-Man, Miles Morales and Venom ones. We've of course gotten an Ant-Man figure for the Quantumania movie, which you can see right here as well. But now this is basically the most modern ones we've gotten so far. We have Wolverine and Captain America. There is a Batman one as well. Unfortunately, Lego did not send me that one early. They have just sent me the Marvel ones. So I figured why not take a look at these ones first because I know that folks are always really interested in what is the future of construction and could we see an original Lego theme like Bionicle come out of builds like this. And so I'm here to give my honest opinion on both these sets. Let's jump into them right now. Alright, so here we have the two brand new LEGO Marvel Super Heroes buildable action figures. This is set number 76257, it is officially called the Wolverine construction figure, and this is set number 76258, Captain America construction figure. Unfortunately, both of these retail for 38 euros, 32 British pounds, and what I assume is going to also be a 38 US dollar price tag, although at this point, the US prices have not been confirmed. This is a pretty drastic increase from the previous buildable figures, the Spider-Man ones, which retailed for only 25 US dollars and came with around 258 pieces, whereas these average at around 300 to 320 pieces, which in my opinion is not really worth an over $10 markup, but we're going to get to value later on. The first thing I do want to talk about though is how do these figures actually play and how do they actually work? These are probably some of the most controversial action figures that LEGO has done in a long time. And this is including stuff like Galador and Knight's Kingdom because those all kind of had their own niche, but I've never really seen that much of a following for the Marvel or DC superhero action figures and I was really curious as to why this was the case. Some people really like them. Some people really dislike them. In fact, the majority of people tend to seemingly really dislike these figures. Honestly, when they first started doing this concept, I was probably one of these figures' biggest defenders. One of my favorite things about them was the fact that they were fully posable, you could get fun poses out of them, and they were pretty cheap, only $25. Unfortunately, that is no longer the case. The best thing about the figures was, well, the price, and they just simply do not have the same price they had before. But here's the thing. I want to review these pretty holistically and we want to talk about price later on in the video, it is something I cannot ignore, but I do want to give them a fair shot and really just talk through the pros and cons of these figures. Now, of course, there is the elephant in the room, the brand new molded face piece, which is basically the same face piece as all the other figures, except this time it has a molded nose. A lot of people have been, maybe justifiably so, clowning on that on the internet. There have been a lot of jokes about the proportions and the way the goofiness of the face of these figures looks, but I do want to try to take a look at them, even just excluding the goofy faces, and just take a look at how they play as action figures in general. The first one I want to start off with is Captain America, because I feel like he is the most vanilla style of action figure that you can get out of this style of build. So I want to talk about these the same way I review Bionicle models in terms of posability, building techniques, overall aesthetics, and finally price. 
So in terms of poseability, you can actually get this into lots of really unique poses. The legs are unfortunately still on ratchet joints. I am of the belief that they simply could do them with ball joints and it would work just as fine. Lego seems to think that the ratchet joints are just much stronger in terms of holding characters and larger builds up, which is definitely true. It is easier to make this stand up and be posed rather than having the upper legs on ball joints, but I really do feel like it would be a lot better just to have these mounted on ball joints themselves just to make it a little bit easier to pose around because right now, the biggest flaw of the posability of the upper thighs is that you cannot actually bend them outwards. As you can see, if I want to bend this outwards, you simply can't. You are stuck to back and forth like this, or up and down. And the thing about up and down is that the way that the armor pieces are aligned on pretty much this and all of the other figures is that they intentionally are more restrictive to prevent the figures from falling over. So because of that, the furthest forward you can move the legs is basically this. I mean, you can splay it out more and maybe, I don't even think you can move it that much higher. This is the furthest forward you can move it and you can actually move it all the way back. So backwards is nice. Forwards, it does feel really limited in play, especially if you want to do kind of a kicking pose or something like that. You just can't get the leg to go up any higher than this, and I do feel like that is a big flaw of the figures. It is, however, an intentional flaw because LEGO actually has restricted the articulation to prevent the figures from toppling over too easily, in my opinion, they've almost course corrected a little bit too much. Obviously, we are far from the days of LEGO Exo Force where the figures were almost impossible to stand and they kept on falling over and parts were falling off, but I feel like LEGO iterated on customer feedback from lines like those where they got a lot of complaints from disgruntled kids and unhappy parents that their action figures and mechs just weren't standing upright, and then they course corrected and they're doing something like this where it really just feels very limited in the articulation. The other downside to this is that while you can get this into pretty dynamic and good poses, like this is actually a really cool pose that I kind of achieved by accident with having him almost being ready to launch the shield forwards and being ready to throw it like so, you can't really get those upper legs to work well with poses. So if you want to splay the legs out, you get this very awkward bow-legged stance, which is definitely not what you want. Of course you can move these out more, but it isn't quite the same as being able to actually rotate these outwards, and because of that, it does feel a little bit awkward sometimes when you're doing the posing, because obviously you have ball joints mounted on the knees there, but these are not on ball joints, so it just feels a little bit limited to me. That being said, for play purposes, this is pretty much all that you do need for articulation. I do understand that these are made for kids first and not necessarily supposed to be posed on display, so I do understand that they are made to allow kids to be able to play with them, to get them in all sorts of crazy positions, and then just to kind of plop them on the ground and they'll stand. I mean, right? Like, just like that, I had the legs in a crazy position and I literally just kind of went like this, which is how kids will do it, kind of mess around for a little bit, and there it stands. Does it look good? Not really, in terms of just not being posed, but it does the job that LEGO wants these to achieve, which are being toys for kids that can stand up just fine when they plonk them down without any posing. And I'm pretty happy with that in terms of achieving that play pattern. Now, in terms of the lower legs, you do have the knees, which do have a full range of articulation. One thing I think is really cool is that you do have the knee pads here, which actually automatically fold forwards a little bit and kind of cascade upwards. Sometimes they do tend to get a little bit stuck, like it can get stuck right here. But if you move the knee pad forward just a little bit, then it is fully perfect to be able to move outwards, which I think is a nice touch. The feet themselves are deliberately limited in terms of articulation, so the most you can move it forward and backwards are just like this. But you can move it side to side like so, and that's really all the articulation you need, especially because you can't actually move the thighs forward all that much, so you don't really even need that much articulation in the feet. Most of the poses you can achieve just like this, which isn't that big of a deal. Although it definitely is a lot more restrictive than, say, a standard LEGO Bionicle style action figure, which is what many folks might be used to. Moving upwards, what is special and what most Bionicle figures did not actually have is waist articulation. So this is all mounted on a ball joint, which you can see right here. 
snaps together like this, and you can actually mount it on the waist. All the characters built like this do have waist articulation, and this one I think is probably the one where it matters the most, because you actually want to get that whole shield action like so. So this is probably one of my favorite features of the Captain America figure itself, is that you can really get this in a swinging motion to be really hurling that shield forwards. I think this is a really fun play feature for kids to be able to do. Obviously it's not anything special they did specifically for Captain America, but it is just a nice touch, especially for this character. Now the way the arms are laid out is you have ball joints on the arms, and we'll talk about the arm placement in just a second. Right now it looks fairly proportional, it looks okay, but we're getting there. You have elbow articulation just on a couple of hinge joints, so you have two hinges right here. And then you have the hands mounted on mixel joints, aka the mini ball joints, as well as each individual finger allowing it to be articulated. Strangely, there is not a ton of consistency between these figures. Captain America, for instance, has four fingers, whereas Wolverine has the anatomically correct five. His are built a little bit different, and most of the figures only do actually have the four fingers. This one, they had to accommodate the spikes or the claws, so they built it a little bit differently and actually do have room for all four of the top fingers, but I think it's kind of strange how they're a little bit inconsistent when it comes to different characters. Lastly, you can articulate the head on another mini ball joint, although a side effect of this is that unfortunately from the side, the neck feels comically skinny. It is almost way too skinny. I'm not really sure why they wouldn't just do this on a normal large size ball joint. I feel like that would solve a lot of problems with the awkwardness of how skinny the neck is. Although thankfully, as soon as he's looking over to the side or just kind of looking front on, you don't really see how skinny the neck is. Now Captain America has one last action feature which is something special for the character. You can remove the shield like so and actually get the shield mounted on the back. There is a rather awkward looking white pin on the back that you can just easily remove but it is just sticking out there so you can actually mount the shield on the back like so which is something that he does in the movies a lot. You are left with this rather awkward exposed pin on the hand there so obviously I would definitely prefer to have him displayed holding the shield itself but I think it is a nice touch for those who do want to display it with the shield on the back. But now speaking of posability we will get to what, in my opinion, is the biggest flaw of these figures. It was a flaw that was introduced in the Iron Man figure, it was continued over to the Spider-Man figures, same issue with Ant-Man, and now unfortunately they still have not fixed the flaw. And so what is the flaw? So, if you may notice, the more you move the arms up, the more awkward the positioning looks. It's not quite as bad for Captain America because they do do the torso having it built in a slightly different area, but as you might be able to notice, basically they have these shoulder pads here which can move up and down, and these are intended to basically give you the illusion of having anatomically correct arms with these shoulders fit right here. Unfortunately, the arm placement is not anatomically correct at all because as you move these shoulder pads up, you may realize that the arms are mounted very low on the torso. In fact, I think the easiest thing to do is just to simply remove the shoulder pads themselves, and then you can see how wrong this looks as a build. It is just the placement of the arms, and thankfully when the shoulder pads are on, this effect is mitigated somewhat because you don't really notice it. However, the more that you raise the arms up and have them fully moved out straight, it is a lot more obvious that you actually have these mounted way too low on the torso. Let's give them a good old T pose to flex on the opponents there. And you'll notice that the arms are just mounted a little bit too low. Now, in my opinion, there is one very easy way to solve this, and that is to mount the shoulder armor on the arms themselves, literally just have them clip on here with a clip, and then mount the arms just up here. I don't know why they haven't solved this, it is the most easy fix they could do. You could literally just remove this upper part and just make the neck attach right one stud lower or move the arms up one stud higher and then literally just attach the shoulder armor directly onto the arms themselves, which also I think would be a lot better for posing. This achieves the same effect that you want, I mean you could even do something like this but it doesn't have the same compromise that right now the arms are just really awkwardly lowly mounted on the body itself. So that is a big con of these figures. Every single one of them, except for the Venom one because that one had a completely different torso build, has this issue. And I don't really know why LEGO hasn't fixed it. 
it is not that big of a deal, I guess, but for me, for someone who does want to get these characters to be somewhat anatomically correct or look like what they're supposed to, this just doesn't feel right, and maybe this is just me being nitpicky, but I do really kind of wish that this was done a little bit better. Overall, though, I think there's a lot to like about this figure, especially when it comes away from posability and more about the building techniques and the aesthetics. And those go hand in hand, because face aside, we're getting to the faces in a little bit. I honestly think that this is a really solid build. Now, just bear with me here. Don't look at the face, and look at this build from the neck down. This is really, really good. The color blocking on this character is pretty phenomenal, and you can tell a lot of great design work went into making this character feel like the movie and comics counterparts. He has dark brown boots with a hint of red on the side. He has the knee pads. He's got really nicely sculpted thighs. The arms, the color blocking on the arms is done in a really nice manner. You have a transition from white to dark blue to the brown of the gloves. The torso in particular is one of the most impressive parts of the character to me, because you actually have the Captain America red, white, and blue, so you have the red and white stripes around the character, using different colored ingots, and then using these curved elements going around them for the wedges. You have a printed piece. Every single decal on this set, by the way, is printed, which is a surprise to be sure, but a welcome one. A printed 3x3 three three circle here. You have some nice detailing of these spikes on the side. This is honestly probably one of my favorite buildable characters just in terms of the color blocking and composition of the torso. And that, again, goes hand in hand with the building techniques. The building techniques used to achieve this are really, really good. And it is just a shame that a lot of it, in my opinion, is kind of thrown out when you go up to the goofy head. And I think we do need to talk about the head. So the head is basically, they have taken the same head that they used for Iron Man and Spider-Man and whatnot, literally the same exact shape, and what they have done is they've just gone boop, and they've added a little bit of a nose. So obviously, gone are the days of when LEGO would make a custom head mold or a custom sculpt for every single buildable character. It simply is not financially responsible for LEGO to do that anymore. After Bionicle and Hero Factory and all that, especially Bionicle G2 and the Star Wars buildable figures, where every single one had probably a unique mold for their weapon as well as their head, a very specialized dual or triple mold, that just isn't very cost efficient for LEGO to do anymore, especially if they want to keep offering sets at good prices. Now when I say these are good prices, no. I, when I say good prices, I'm referring to the Spider-Man buildable figures. We'll talk about prices in a little bit. But at the end of the day, LEGO has changed a lot as a company since the days of Bionicle, and they basically just have a policy against making new molds unless they absolutely need to. They do this to cut down costs, and they do this to be able to allow for mold slots to be used in better ways and to give us different types of pieces, and if every single LEGO Marvel or DC construction figure had a uniquely molded head, or even a uniquely molded head and weapons, that wouldn't fly for LEGO nowadays. So what they've done is they've made a couple of things. They've made a generic smooth armor plate for Iron Man style figures or Spider-Man stuff. Well, Spider-Man could have used the nose as well. But they've also made the identical piece, but with a nose. And it works for some characters better than others. I honestly don't think it's that bad in person for Captain America. The thing that bugs me the most is that the head is almost too cartoony to me. It feels like this is a minifigure head. In terms of the graphic design, obviously a little bit more stylized, the eyes are super stylized, it's in a different style. But in terms of the simplicity of the graphic design, it feels like I'm looking at a minifigure head. Which is not a bad thing, because it does somewhat keep within the style of LEGO characters, but I feel like they maybe went a little bit too cartoony for this particular one. In contrast, the Batman one, which is the DC character, also releasing June 1st, and I'll probably do a separate review of that. If people are interested, do let me know in the comments if you want to see a review of the Batman one as well, because I'll have to go and buy that myself. But I do think the Batman one, the graphic design, was done a lot better than this one, which still does feel a little bit awkward to me in how cartoony it is. Now, now I will admit, this is objectively based on the Avengers Assemble cartoon, so this is supposed to be the cartoon depiction of Captain America. So I don't necessarily fault LEGO for making it feel very cartoony, 
But it also feels like they pushed it maybe a little bit too far in the wrong direction, especially because the body is actually really detailed, somewhat anatomically correct, at least in the way the torso is built and you've got the nice stripes around it and everything. And then you get to the head and I feel like that does mess with the aesthetics a little bit. But with that, I think we've summed up our look at Captain America. Again, prices will be coming at the end of this video, and I just want to briefly talk about Wolverine. Because for all intents and purposes, when you buy one of these characters, you basically buy them all for the most part. Sure, there are some oddities like the Venom figure, which is just built pretty much entirely differently than these characters, but for the most part, you basically have very similar, almost clone style of builds, with a few similarities and differences. Now the cool thing about System is that you can make as many differences in body shape, in sculpting, in build techniques as you would like. These characters do share pretty much the same or very similar build for their legs. Yes, that is true. Especially for the feet. The feet are almost the same. However, they do differ in a lot of unique places. Wolverine has got these specialized, almost stirrup-like pieces on his lower legs, so they actually have these being fully brick-built. The torso for Wolverine is very different compared to Captain America. It is more hunched over, it's shorter, as Wolverine is a shorter character in the comics and in most media, not the movies, but in almost all other forms of media, he is a short king, as the, the youngins say. And he's got a really nice build for the torso. I think the Captain America build was a little bit more impressive to me just in terms of how they were able to get the detail, but I do like how they captured the X-Men belt going around. Again, every single decal element is printed, which is very nice. And then the back is just fairly plain. You can see what the backs of the characters look like here, but you can see they're doing something a little different. Now, the most interesting thing that they have done with Wolverine is that they have tried to give him a hunched over appearance. And to accomplish that, they've done something that, honestly, I like an idea, but not an execution. Because as you can see, the neck is mounted on a mixel joint facing upwards, but the actual ball piece is facing downwards. So Wolverine can look side to side exactly this much. That's it. This is the most amount of side to side articulation you can get on the head. You can make him look up and down just fine. You can kind of make him look over to the side by having him bend over with his neck up and doing that, but as soon as you put it down, it locks into place and you cannot make him look side to side. And you can barely even kind of make him go like this. So I think the idea was really good, but in execution, it's just not great. The unfortunate thing is I can think of a lot of other ways that they could have fairly easily just done this to avoid this issue. Bionicle actually realized this was an issue fairly early on in its run, and they swapped it, so instead of having heads mounted on sockets, they had heads mounted on balls. The balls were on the top here, and the socket was attached to the head. That would have solved all our issues. And I don't know why they didn't do it for these ones, because it is objectively better to always have the ball joint on the top of the neck and then the socket attached to the head to allow for more articulation. Right now, you don't get a lot of articulation. The other thing is that, interestingly enough, Wolverine has his shoulder pauldrons with pieces underneath them to prevent them from going downwards too much, which I think is cool because he does have shoulder pauldrons in the X-Men 97 animated series, which is what this is based on. But it also means that the issue with the lower placement of the tan arms themselves is just very awkwardly showcased here. It is the same exact position as Captain America, but I feel like it is more obvious here, especially because one, the head is so low, and also the shoulder pads are so high up and you cannot move them down. So the placement of the upper arms feels a bit awkward. Thankfully though, you can articulate the hands in pretty much however direction that you want. The claws, yeah, they're a little too long, but they're basically the only existing Lego piece that would have worked for Wolverine, and they did not have the budget to make a new mold just for this character, so I think they do fine. I've seen a lot of people complaining about the claws online, and while I do understand it, they are a little bit too long, I think it's not that bad. Like, it's not that big of a deal. They work just fine for Wolverine claws in my opinion, but of course, your opinion may differ. Now. That's honestly all there is to say specifically about Wolverine. I feel like I covered all the points of articulation and posability and everything else in the Captain America review, where you can see basically this has all the same issues, like you can't move this to the side, you have the issues of the arms being mounted low, the head still feels awkward to me, and if I had to pick my favorite between the two, I honestly think it might be Captain America. I did not think I would say this, 
But Captain America feels just better proportioned in general. It feels very much like a complete solid figure, whereas Wolverine has got some weird gaps here, like the arms are mounted low, and just the head, I think, is what really messes with me. Because the thing is, if you look at Wolverine's head in the actual animated series, I actually can pull it up because I've got the box right next to me, this head is way too wide on the black elements compared to the actual head of Wolverine. You can see them side by side. I will admit the box art makes it look a lot worse than it actually is, because in the real thing, the blacks kind of blend together, so you can kind of see like, okay, this is the mask. The box art makes it look like there's a rectangle around its face. It is not doing the character any favors there. I kind of feel bad because like this, this is almost, this makes it look way worse than it actually is. But in actuality, it's not great, because what you're supposed to have is right here, where his upper mouth goes, this is supposed to be cut off. Like, we're supposed to chop this piece off almost halfway through. But instead, we have a rectangle going down lower here, and I guess you could say, like, okay, maybe part of it is that lower part there. But you do have the printing, and it just doesn't look quite right to me in order to have this be fully brick-built. Now, the funny thing is, Wolverine would have been perfect having his own molded head. And what's especially interesting is that things have almost kind of come full circle because one of the early concepts for the 2012 CCBS Marvel Buildable Figures was a Wolverine character. You can see the concept art that they were doing online for an actual molded head for Wolverine. Instead, they chose not to do them and they did Captain America and the Hulk and Iron Man instead, which I think were probably good choices because they are some of the core Avengers. But I do find it kind of funny how back in 2012, LEGO was considering just doing a straight up dual molded or even triple molded custom head for Wolverine and how the times have changed and now they are really trying to scramble and make do with the parts they have available. What I will say is given the parts they had available to them, I think this is probably the best they could have done. I legitimately cannot think of a better way they could have done the mask if you told me that I had to make Wolverine's mask using this piece and existing LEGO system bricks. I don't think I could have come up with something as good as this, but the fact of the matter is this isn't that good, and it very much is obvious the shaping just is not right. From some angles, maybe it doesn't look too bad, but especially front on, he's got the rectangle, it's almost like he's got Cyclops goggles on or something like that. It just doesn't feel quite right to me, and add to the fact that the claws are a little bit too long, the proportions are a little strange, and you cannot bend these outwards, that is the most annoying thing to me is I wish I could bend these thighs outwards because I could come up with much better poses than a very awkward bow-legged pose here. That is just some cons in terms of the aesthetics of the model, which is why I think I would place Captain America over Wolverine. But now it's time to talk about the real elephant in the room, and that is the price. So these buildable figures started off really expensive with Iron Man being closer to $50, which I thought was pretty ridiculous, but Iron Man had a lot more pieces and drum lacquered stuff and even a specialized UCS style plaque, so that was fine. When they came out with the Spider-Man and Miles Morales ones, I was really excited because for $25, I was willing to overlook a lot of the awkward flaws about the buildable characters because, yeah, they were only $25, which for the amount of pieces that you would get was really, really good. These are not even $35. Like, $35 would have been a stretch for these. But these are $38. I don't know. I don't like that price at all, to be completely honest. Yes, LEGO sent me these sets for free. But that does not mean I have to say good things about them. In fact, I would never just say good things about a LEGO set just because it was sent to me for free. If anything, I am more critical because then I know that people know I got it for free, so then they're expecting me to, to at least be as honest as possible. And I do try to be as honest as possible, and I do generally tend to be very positive on what LEGO does. It, it takes a lot to actually get me to, to say something is, is ridiculously overpriced. But I think, I think we're at that point. I think... We are at the point where 38 euros or dollars is simply way too much for these. Way too much. I, I don't know where that's coming from, and I do hope that this doesn't give the wrong message to LEGO. If these do not sell well, because people think they're too expensive, I hope LEGO won't go and say, oh, there isn't a demand for action figure-like characters, there isn't a demand for construction, maybe we shouldn't have tried this in the first place, and not even try to expand the system or evolve it. Because I feel like this system has so much potential. 
These figures could be really good if they fixed a few minor flaws that are ubiquitous across every figure. Make these ball joints so you can splay these out, raise these up higher, just mount them higher, I don't know, make the graphic design for the face a little better, and use a regular ball joint for the neck instead of a mixel joint. These are all things they could fix today. Like, you could mod these sets today and make them pretty much perfect. So I do think that this has a lot of potential. The building techniques are really interesting. I feel like they're really able to hit its stride in terms of the torso design, especially for Captain America. There's a lot to like about them. But if they're too overpriced, people will not buy them, and LEGO might just decide to not make them anymore, which would be very sad. So as a message to LEGO, I certainly hope that you try to make these a little bit cheaper, see if it's possible to do that. I mean, you know it is possible because just last year, or a year ago, or a year or two ago, we got the Spider-Man buildable figures for 25. This is an over 12 to $13 increase, so I don't know where that's coming from. Not a big fan of the price, to be completely honest. The price is just kind of ridiculous to me. But overall, the figures are good, they're not great, but they could be great. I think that there's a few things holding them back from being great, and those are easily fixable things, and I really hope that LEGO does maybe at some point take that into account, because I do think these have a lot of potential. There is a lot of potential for brick-built action figures. These are some of the best system-based action figures we've ever gotten from LEGO. If only they were not $38 and just had a few of the kinks worked out. But I've been going on and on about these, and that about sums up my thoughts, and I'm definitely really curious to hear yours. I don't know if there's much more that I can say about these figures that I haven't said already. A lot of the initial flaws that were there when they first were introduced last year and a couple of years ago are honestly still there. They are still part of the issues with the design of these characters. There's a lot to like, but there's also a lot that I feel could be improved on, and that's just how I feel. But with that, we have summed up our reviews of the Captain America construction figure and the Wolverine construction figure. Hope you enjoyed this video, and I'm really curious to hear what your thoughts are on these characters, and will you be buying these when they release? Alright, and with that, we have summed up my thoughts on the brand new LEGO Marvel Super Heroes buildable figures. Definitely feel a little bit mixed on them. I feel like there's a lot of good things about them, but there's also a lot of things that I feel could be very easily and very quickly improved by just part choices and placement of limbs, which do still feel rather awkward to me, and I'm very curious at what point these will finally hit their stride, because it is a new building system, LEGO was experimenting with the platform. It almost feels like the early days of CCBS, when they were playing around with Hero Factory 2.0 and 3.0, and things didn't really start getting good until Breakout, which was the fourth year, and things didn't start getting really, really good until Bionicle G2, which was several years into the system existing. So personally, I'm very curious what else LEGO will do with this template. I, for one, love it when LEGO does licensed stuff, but I also love it when LEGO does original ideas and original themes. And I certainly would really appreciate a specialized original action figure theme from LEGO that maybe isn't Bionicle but it's something else, something like a Hero Factory, or dare I say, Galador. But of course, that is up for the future to decide. I do not know if LEGO will do any non-licensed figures in this style. They are pretty fun to play around with, as you see, but definitely not without their flaws. And of course, let me know down in the comments below what do you think of these sets? Do you like them? Do you dislike them? What do you think of the price point and how that keeps on shifting? Because I don't know how I feel about that. And without further ado, we've summed up this video. Thank you all so much for tuning in to Duck Bricks. Be sure to like and subscribe for even more LEGO news, reviews, discussion, and analyses coming your way very soon, and bye for now.